Good morning, Dr. Matheson. I am delighted to have you here with me to talk about your transition to retirement. And I'm just going to start by giving a little background to everybody about who you are. Okay. Dr. Matheson is a thoracic surgeon and visiting surgeon at Mass General, distinguished Hermes Grio Professor of Surgery at Harvard Medical School. He joined the Mass General Department of Surgery in 1984 and was chief of the Division of Thoracic Surgery from 1994 to 2019, the chief of the Division of Cardiac Surgery from 2007 to 2011, and the program director of cardiothoracic surgery from 1995 to 2017. He received the Distinguished Service Award from the Society of Thoracic Surgeons in 2014. He's past director of the American Board of Thoracic Surgery, past president of the Thoracic Surgery Directors Association, past treasurer and president of the Society of Thoracic Surgeons, and past counselor of the European Association of cardiothoracic surgery. So you and I talked previously, and I love what you told me about two models you had. One was not the best model for retirement. He learned his lesson after going out to Arizona, thinking mm -hmm. he wanted to play golf all the time. And then the other one, a Williams College graduate, which is my alma mater as well. So could you talk about those two stories with us, please? Sure, I'd be happy to. First, I'd like to uh, thank you for the invitation to do this. Uh, uh, there is a, a, a message, not just from me, but from a lot of people about retirement. It's an important topic. Uh, most people don't give it enough thought as they're going through their career. Uh, so anything I can do to enlighten people or give them some things to think about, uh, I'm more than happy to do. I, I will just say one one correction that I've been associated with the Mass General since 1974 when I came as a resident. So the fit, my goal is to make it to 50 years, which is in a year and a half. So I, I like, Congratulations. like that. So that's, uh, that's what I'm shooting for. Um, retirement is a, a really important thing, uh, to think about. Um, I'll directly uh, answer the question about these uh, individuals that I mentioned. So when I went to uh, Chicago from uh, when I finished training, I went there to replace uh, one of the surgeons who was about to retire. And uh, he and I had to spend six months every week driving out to a small community west of Chicago, uh, DeKalb, Illinois. And we, we rode out for an hour and a half and rode back for an hour and a half. All he talked about was retiring. And all he talked about was playing golf every day. He had bought a place in Phoenix and just couldn't wait to get out there. Um, he was financially set. I think that's one of the, maybe one of the common misconceptions about retirement is that some people think that's all that matters. Well, it's an important thing, obviously, uh, but it's maybe the least important uh, of, of uh, the things to consider. Um, he went out there um, and he was fine for a couple of months. He, he retired in January. And so for a couple of months with the nice weather out there, he was happy. But then the warm weather came and he would call, you know, once a week and then it was twice a week and then it was, you know, three or four times a week. And it was clear that uh, he realized that uh, uh, retirement was just not about playing golf. And so one day he called and said, Doug, I'm coming back. He said, I, I realize that you, you can't play golf every day. And there's more to retirement than that. And so he got very involved. This was the early days of home computers. He took a lot of computer classes. He got very involved in the art world, still played a lot of golf, but uh, found other things to occupy his time. Uh, the other example, so I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good <laughs> was Earl Wilkins, who was uh, a thoracic surgeon. And arguably, one of the reasons when I came back was that Wilk was going to retire six months after I returned. He retired to Williamstown. Uh, I thought that was kind of a curious place to retire until I realized he'd been associated with Williams College ultimately for 84 years. He passed away at the age of 101 a year and a half ago. And I was uh, fortunate enough to go to his memorial service and heard a lot of things about him that I sort of knew, but not uh, really knew. Um, and he emphasized uh, when you retire uh, he said finances are important, uh, but he said, you know, Doug, you've got to keep your mind and your body active. 
He said both are important. And a third point uh, was that you need to continue to keep yourself engaged socially. You know, as a physician, you're surrounded by people all day long at work. And when you retire, that's not the case. Uh, except for Wilk, it was when he went to Williamstown. There were a lot of Williams grads who were there. We had a, a, post, uh, a visiting professorship in his honor. And one day at the age of, I think he was almost 80, uh, he was standing around with some of our residents who really didn't know him. They'd, uh, you know, he'd long since left and they knew of him, but didn't really know him. And he was a remarkably vibrant, handsome, you know, man who kept himself in great shape. And he was, we were sitting up in the office and one of the residents said, well, Dr. Wilkins, you, you look great. What's what's your secret? He said, well, this year, my secret was half court basketball. Everybody kind of raised their eyebrows and chuckled a little bit. And he said, and I want you to know I was the youngest player on the court at 79 or 80. So he was on the board of trustees. He was chairman of the board of trustees. He was very involved in the community of Williams and Williams College. And it became very clear to me why he moved back there, because it was the perfect place for him to go to address those issues of mind, body, and staying uh, engaged with friends. And so he was the person who I think many of us looked up to as uh, an example, not as just a thoracic surgeon, but as somebody who successfully retired. So tell us a little bit about your transition to retirement, how you came to the decision and what that felt like. Well, if I had to give one piece of advice to everybody is that you have to plan for it and plan for it carefully. Uh, because I had these experiences with the, more than just the two that I mentioned, I thought about it for a long time. I think most of us you know, have been fortunate uh, so that the next day was always pretty much planned out for us. School, medical school, residency, uh, you join a, a staff, uh, and every day is sort of planned out for you. Uh, but when you retire, that's not the case. And so that's up to you. So in many respects, it's the most important part of your life, which can go on for many years for some people. Um, and so I started planning, you know, I'd say, or at least thinking about it, when I was on those uh, uh, hour and a half uh, drives with Dr. Jensik in 1984. Um, and so I, I planned for it carefully. Uh, I you know, was fortunate enough, I'd say, if you can work this out, to sort of gradually step away from the operating table. It was a it was a gradual process where I certain cases I, you know, eight, 10, 12 hours, I, I really didn't uh, want to do that anymore. So I was able to pass those along to other people in the division. Uh, then it was the volume of surgery and and then everything was accelerated by the pandemic. I had pretty much decided that I would stop operating in July of the year of the pandemic. Um, and March is when I think it was March was the last case I did, not knowing it was going to be the last case I did. I had half a dozen cases lined up, mostly airway cases. And uh, I had planned to stop in July of that year. And then with the operating room closing for, well, quite a while, four, four, five, six weeks, it didn't make any sense for me to then come back. They had said these kind of cases are semi elective. And so they said, Doug, it's not likely that you'll get to those cases until late in the summer. And I thought, well, that really doesn't make any sense. So in a sense that the pandemic allowed a transition, maybe when I wasn't really quite ready or thinking about it, but it worked out perfectly. Um, I would say Zoom made a huge difference in that I was still able to stay engaged in a lot of the activities within our uh, division, uh, still by, still to this day, go to two clinics in New Hampshire and one in Maine through Zoom. So uh, it was sort of fortuitous. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I'd had to, you know, come into work more frequently or drive uh, in person to those two clinics that I would have kept doing this right to the present. So that was the process. And, uh, you know, I've I've tried to pay attention to my health. I exercise five or six times a week. Uh, I stay engaged. I still stay engaged with uh, the staff at MGH and thoracic surgery, uh, which to me is also very important. Uh, there's nothing that uh, gives me greater satisfaction than to come into the hospital, which I do now about once a week, um, and see people that I haven't seen for a long time, and especially spending time with my uh, former colleagues who I've worked so closely with. 
both uh, the office staff, the residents, and the thoracic surgeons and nurses. Uh, there's nothing better than that. I've often joked that uh, I would try to bring a lawn chair and sit outside the back entrance or exit from the hospital at five o'clock and just talk to people as they leave and go to go home. So uh, that, that's that been an important part of the satisfaction of being retired. What have you most enjoyed in this new era you have of free time that you structure for yourself outside of your ongoing MGH connections? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I would say the things that I enjoy the most are, again, seeing my friends and colleagues. That I can't tell you how valuable that socialization is as part of retirement. Uh, on the other side of that is the satisfaction of now finally having time to do things that I couldn't do or couldn't do as much as I wanted to spending time with my family, uh, I have two uh, twin grandsons, uh, going to every sporting event that they're involved in, which they're involved in a lot, <laughs> but I enjoy that enormously. Uh, so that's been great. I, uh, I love to read. Um, I'd say one of the surprises that I haven't found as much time to read because I seem to be busy every day. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. I wake up still about the same time every day at 6 a.m. and I usually stay up till midnight, and most of the time when I reach 11 o'clock, I think, God, what did I do all day? I've been busy all day long. So uh, you know, my kids joke, and they say, Dad, you're certainly not retired. You seem to be busier than almost anybody else they knew still in this sort of uh, transition, if you will, to you know not being involved with the hospital. So playing golf is something that I love to do, and uh, you know, I occasionally get out. Now I can do that a little more frequently. So having time to do things like that, uh, uh, has been uh, very gratifying. What have you discovered about yourself in in this period of life that you mm -hmm. didn't hadn't paid attention to before? I, I've learned not not really for the first time, but I know I I find out or I'm reassured that I'd love to be busy. I still like to be busy. Uh, I'm fortunate to have a great family, uh, a great wife. I think uh, you know when you're busy all the time, you're home maybe not as much as you'd like, and so. You know, when you're home a lot, you're home with your wife, which that that's a new experience in some respects. Uh, but it's it's been great. Uh, my wife and I uh, have a great relationship and we've essentially spent almost every waking minute of the last three years together and uh, have enjoyed every minute of it. So uh, that that's been a wonderful realization that I made the right choice. Uh, <laughs> I think she feels the same way. So I think that's an important part of figuring that out. What matters most to you at this stage of your life? Well, I'd say still staying connected. Um, you know, my whole life revolved around uh, the division of thoracic surgery, all the staff, the office staff, the nurses, and most importantly, the residents. So I still get, uh, and I'd say that's one of the gratifying things. I still, I still get uh, uh, phone calls for advice and you know, certainly on some clinical cases, uh, you know, uh, and then, you know, just their careers and things of that sort. I find that very gratifying. Um, it's flattering to me, although I don't let on that it's flattering, obviously. But, you know, being somebody who still is engaged with the people who meant so much to you for, as I said, almost 50 years uh, uh, is has been nice. It's not as if I walked out the door and everybody forgot about me. So that that's been uh uh, a gratifying event as well. Something that you never know, but um, it's been great. Great. You've, you've already talked about this, but let me just ask this question again. This will be my last question. What do you most want your fellow faculty at MGH to know as they consider retirement? Well, I'd, I'd say the thing that I tell everybody when people ask me, how's it going? I said, just remember, you need to plan for it maybe more than you've ever planned for anything else in your life. This, and I would say one of the comments you hear most commonly from people is, gee, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself tomorrow. I, I wake up and think, God, oh, what am I going to do today? That, that's, a, that's a trap you don't want to fall into. And so I tell everybody the key to it, I give them the words of wisdom of Earl Wilkins, you know, pay attention to your mind, your body, uh, and socialization, you know, especially in this time of the pandemic, which I think has sort of changed maybe all of the preconception uh, notions about retirement, because the pandemic can be a very isolating experience. Thank you so much. This has been 
an absolutely delightful opportunity to spend more time with you and exchange a con and have this conversation. So I wish you all the best in your continuing retirement. Well, thank, thank you. you very much again. Uh, I'm wearing my retirement outfit, no, no, no coat and tie, a sweater and a shirt. So <laughs> find some nice, comfortable clothes. I guess I will close with that bit of advice. <laughs> <laughs>